lot of the parallels that I could make about myself um, aren't about conscious rap, but more about like real or underground or whatever. I mean, there were times in my life where like if you did a song with an R&B singer, like I wasn't fucking with you. I wasn't <laughs> fucking with you at all. If you if you were somebody that that rapped about dealing drugs directly, you know, um, I really didn't fuck with you in high school. Like mm -hmm. I, I, I had like a sort of like a moral high ground or whatever. And so in terms mm -hmm. of like being a child and listening to music in, in an immature way, I mean, I carry that on into my 20s. But like I have since realized that a lot of that music is great. And I've also come to the realization that like my love of hip hop is for authenticity. Mm -hmm. So just because somebody and I this gets into one of the paragraphs here. So this actually segues nicely into something I wanted to bring up because there is one thing in this article that I kind of take exception with that I think he's admitting was wrong, but I do want to point it out. But like, you know, my love of hip hop is the authenticity of it. So if I feel like what somebody's saying, even though it's not my lived experience, is is an actual lived experience that isn't glorifying something that didn't take place nowadays i'm i'm with it you know what i'm saying like mm -hmm. i don't i don't have to have been a drug dealer to want to hear music or, or not want to hear that's the wrong way of saying it but but you know be able to listen to somebody that did deal drugs i don't have to go out of my way to morally judge them because i understand more mm -hmm. about the world and why people make those decisions in their life than i did when i was 17 or 18 or 19 or 20. You know, I, I don't judge everything through my own prism of like, well, I'm fucking broken. I don't do that. So why should I listen to somebody that does? I don't I don't put myself in, you know, I, I put myself in other people's shoes. I don't try to get them to fit into my shoes. You know what I'm saying? And like, that's a maturity thing that can happen mm -hmm. to you no matter what age you're at. There's people right now growing up that are 18, 19, making moral decisions based on other people. You know, based on their own ideas of other people, that it, that they will regret someday, and you know, that's what I would own as a as you know. I hated the term backpacker then, and I still hate it now. But as that yeah. sort of rap fan, you know, like I missed out on Mob Deep. You know, yeah. I missed out on a lot of great music that nowadays I go back and I listen to. Prodigy's one of my favorite rappers of all time now. Now, I got into Prodigy much later in his career, and that's what brought me back into Mob Deep, and I still prefer a lot of later Prodigy, like Albert Einstein and stuff like that, but um, but I missed out on all that. You know, I, I missed out on it because I, I had some kind of thing that I, was, that I was trying to protect or whatever. Like, I didn't listen to Iron Man for years because at the time when it came out to me, it was too drug-centric. And that was the way that I thought about things, you know? And, like, I I didn't understand. And, and let me let me cycle it into this, because I think he points out what he didn't understand here, you know? Mm -hmm. um, I want to just read the right part. Mm -hmm. Well, because it's two paragraphs, but I'll skim through a little bit of it here, where he gets into sort of making these moral judgments himself, you know, where mm -hmm. he, he's talking a little bit about Kendrick's new album, Kendrick Lamar's new album, which, you know, for all, I haven't heard for full disclosure. But um, he says, quote, Kendrick appears to want some of this conscious, you know, relevancy. Um, um, anti Diaries feels like an earnest attempt to wrestle with transphobia, but he seems utterly lost on how to express such ideals in a meaningful way. On the same track, he dead names his trans relatives while also deploying an anti-gay slur in order to make a point that hardly requires his repeating of the slur. He sounds sensitive to issues of sexual abuse on Mother I Sober, but then features Kodak Black, somebody who's been accused of rape and pled guilty for first degree assault. It goes on, but that's the thing, conscious rap as an identity and as a political lens has never been anti-sexist, it's never been anti-homophobia, defend brand Nubian's Afrocentricity if you must, but the vile hatred espoused on their 1992 track, Punk Jump Up to Get Beat Down, is unlistenable. It has only ever made room for cis at uh, black men to assert themselves. Queen Latifah and Lauryn Hill are probably the only major exceptions. It was disappointing to hear Kendrick pulling from this old playbook, this Old Testament, if you will. 
on his new album. Um, but in a way, that's exactly what Being Conscious is actually about. So I'm not going to get into what he said about Kendrick Lamar's album because I haven't heard it and I don't know anything about you know, any of those artists, to be honest with you. That's not me making... Well, I'm, not, I'm, be, I'm uh, not making myself an identifier by saying it. It's just, again, these are facts. Take it for what you will. But I will get into a little bit of what he said about Brand Nubian and I the, the exception that I take and he kind of gets into it a little bit more but I won't sit here and read his article piece for piece but mm -hmm. um, you have to come to a point in life where you are not actively trying to cancel people all the time and you have to expect you have to come and meet people where they are I'm not defending anything that Brand Nubian said on their records Brand Nubian was always um, a group especially after Grand Puba left that towed the line between offensive and progressive in terms of what they were saying. Um, I loved Punk Jump Up to get beat down. I don't remember every last word that was said on that song. I just remember how I felt when I heard the song. And it was one of my favorite songs in high school. And, you know, so was that whole album. And God We Trust was played all the time. Me and my friend had that record that was a tape for us, but like had that tape on blast regularly. And... I just, I, again, like, you have to accept people for where they are and, like, what their life experience is. Obviously, you don't want to promote or accept somebody who, um, you know, at least in the moment, accept somebody who is guilty of, like, sexual assault or something like that, or, like, blatant, you know, if it's a white person, like, blatant racism. But at the same time, you can't morally judge somebody for the words they used 30 years ago in an article today. I just can't right, but do I that. Okay, but I think the main point is that, like, the idea of conscious hip-hop is this, like, you know, moral superiority. Um, but and, is, is that how the but, artists feel about it? Well, I don't know. Um, I don't know. I, I mean, yeah. that's, that's... I don't a, think so. But, like, but, yeah, go ahead. I mean, that's... And that's probably fair, but that, like, you know, he's, he's speaking as, like, a rap fan in this era and mm -hmm. like and that was the thing is like you know and he's talking about that these people you know who were billed as conscious weren't you know be you know in this thought that they were morally superior you know if it's not like just from the listener side that like you know this sort of like subgenre is superior to other shit because it's you know i don't know uh because, yeah, because it's more focused on, like, social justice it still isn't, like, all the way there. And, like, the homophobia that is like that's that was existent in mainstream rap at the time still existed in the, the conscious side of things, you know? Sure. Like, there was still sexism at play. It just wasn't in the same exact way.